We know the animal model misleads and is therefore dangerous to be, to be, depend on when developing new drugs, when doing safety tests, or trying to understand the kind of remedies that they'll be examining if they get their way at this new Cambridge Centre. At the recent public inquiry which we've heard about, we weren't in, into whether they can build this gigantic hellhole. We weren't even allowed to talk about the cruelty, the suffering. We had to concentrate on the science, fair enough. We concentrated on pollution, on things like um, the green belt bus lanes, etc. And the kind of problems that are going to be caused by protests and demonstrations of the sort we got here today. And there are going to be lots of pro protests and lots of problems caused if they ever get their way and go ahead with this centre. Yeah. But let us remind ourselves what this is all about. Let us remind ourselves about the cold, unblinking savagery that the people who call themselves scientists are capable of when they conduct their neurological experiments on monkeys. Now in 2001, Animal Aid awarded a Mad Science Award to Cambridge University itself. It was for experiments on monkeys associated with Huntington's disease. Twelve marmosets were injected ten or more times with seizure-causing chemicals directly into the brain. And then they were set nine months of tests. And among these tests, they had to reach for food. They were deprived of food. They had to reach for food while their arms and their legs were immobilized by sticky labels. This counts as science. They injected them as well with a chemical called apomorphine, which caused them to spin uncontrollably up to 300 times in a 60-minute session. And at the end of it all, you know what the researchers said? We could not replicate the symptoms or the pathology of Huntington's, which is what it was supposed to be all about. Is this what counts as cutting-edge research in Blair's brave new knowledge economy with its biotech clusters and its commercial spin-offs? The wrong species, the wrong disease, done not to help humanity, but out of habit, for reasons of intellectual arrogance. And so the, the researchers concerned can attract drug company money by getting published in upmarket medical journals. Money, prestige, habit, arrogance. That's their game. <laughs> Let me give you another example of cutting edge research. This is from Oxford University, Experimental Psychology Department. This also won a Mad Science Award. A group of monkeys, again, they were brain damaged with chemicals or having parts of their brain removed. Some of them took 29 hours to recover from surgery. And one of the tests they set them was, quotes, to test their reaction to stress and frustration. You know what they did? They deprived them of food. They starved them. And then they showed them food. But they kept the food out of reach. And then they manipulated them into pressing a button up to 800 times in one session. They were so frustrated, these animals, that some of them resorted to biting and tearing at their own limbs. Now, if this research centre goes ahead, we're going to see a lot more of this. This is going to be the largest primate research centre in all of Europe. It'll turn Cambridge into the monkey torture capital of the whole of Europe. This is why we've got to stop it. That's why we're here today. We will stop it! Prescott is going to say, and even if he gives the go-ahead, even if he sees and rules in favour of compassion and common sense, there's still a chance it can be stopped. I mean, we know what's been going on behind the scenes, don't we? Both Blair and his science minister, Lord Sainsbury, the Labour Party's sugar daddy, who has given the Labour Party some 11.8 million pounds in the last several years, about 8 million since he got a government post, they both on, went on record saying that this centre must be built. And then they staged a public inquiry 
to help them make up their mind. What kind of politics is this? But as we've heard today, the battle has just begun because even if they get the go-ahead, uh, the, the, the university doesn't necessarily have to go ahead and the chances of a reverse turn are increasing rapidly. You may have heard that there's been a meeting this past week. The council of the university, let's see if I'm explaining this simply for those of you who don't know, the council of the university, which is like the government, when it went to what amounts to the parliament of the university, which is called Regent House some years ago, to seek approval, which it had to do, it didn't even tell them that monkeys were going to be used in this centre. And it got the approval on the nod. Now, you may have thought that the people of Regent House would have asked, but they didn't. So, there is now a revolt building. And that internal revolt is something we must encourage. There must be huge numbers of students and members of the faculty who are seriously concerned about this project. I mean, the question is, why do they remain silent? A university like Cambridge, if it's about anything, it's about the freedom to think freely, is it not? To speak freely, to speak a case. This is why our tax money goes to support the students and the faculty. Are they so scared, the students, that they're going to be marked down? And the faculty, that they'll lose their research funding, that they dare not speak? If so, what kind of regime is Cambridge running? And if, if it's the kind of regime that suggests, then we need regime change. In any case, we've got to encourage this result. We've got to get the faculty and the students to speak out. We've got to support speak. We've got to support escape. We've got to protest. We've got to leaflet. We've got to write letters to editors across the country and support animal aid. We continue to work hard on this issue. 115 MPs have signed a parliamentary motion initiated by animal aid saying that animal experiments should be banned because they don't work and they're cruel. The public has also, we commissioned a poll, has also called for a ban. They want it ended. So take heart, this battle is just beginning. If we can win the argument on experience on monkeys, which is supposedly the best of all animal models, the primate model, so-called, then what argument, what justification is there for experimenting on rats and guinea pigs and dogs and cats? The whole thing melts away. The chance. That's why we're here. That's why I'm here. We're not here for the badges. As Dawn said, we're here to win. Stick to it and we will win. And thank you for coming.